Hello everyone and welcome back to the sessions on strategic financial management. In this CA final class of SFM, we are continuing with the topic risk return and portfolio theory. This is the sixth and last lecture on portfolio theory. Friends, in this class, we are going to begin with a very important concept in portfolio that is concept number 36, William Sharp's single index model. Now before I explain you anything within this, let me first tell you, we are going to divide this whole discussion into two segments. First, the William Sharp's approach of determining the overall portfolio risk and the second part will be constructing an optimum portfolio. So both of these will be part of this today's discussion. So first thing first, let us first understand William Sharp's approach for determining the overall portfolio risk. Once you learn this, you are going to compare the calculations as per William Sharp with the Markowitz model. So in the earlier classes, you have learned Markowitz model for computing the overall portfolio risk. So once you learn this new concept of computing total risk or overall portfolio risk through William Sharp's single index model, then you are going to compare this with the earlier learned concept that is portfolio risk by Markowitz model. So I will tell you all the similarities and differences also. So first thing, as per William Sharp, the total risk of the portfolio is classified into two segments, systematic risk and unsystematic risk. So this is nothing new, correct? Even Markowitz had the same approach. But yes, there is a difference. While in Markowitz model, what we did, we have always aimed at first determining the overall portfolio risk, correct? You first calculate the portfolio variance, which indicates the overall portfolio risk. Then from the total portfolio risk, you subtract the systematic risk and then the balancing figures obtained at the end the residuary risk is the unsystematic risk. In the approach followed by William Sharp, the equation remains same. That is total risk of the portfolio equals to systematic risk plus unsystematic risk. But for making this calculation, you would first compute systematic risk. Then you would independently compute unsystematic risk then take the aggregate of the two and that would be total risk of the portfolio. This is how the approach suggested by William Sharp differs from Markowitz model. So friends, regarding systematic risk calculation, no different concept. It is exactly similar to what we have learned earlier. Recall what we have learned. How do you determine systematic risk of the portfolio? Obviously, I'm talking about using variance approach you would take variance of the market sigma m squared and that you will be multiplying with the beta of portfolio squared. So sigma m squared into beta of portfolio squared will give you systematic risk of the portfolio. Now whether it is Markowitz model or William Sharp's model, the same calculation would be done. And the calculation would also be done in the same way. As I have mentioned, sigma m square into beta p square is the systematic risk of portfolio, whether it is William Sharp's approach or Markowitz model. Now, in William Sharp's approach, you are then going to compute separately and independently the unsystematic risk of the portfolio. Now, unsystematic risk of each stock will be multiplied to the squared value of the weight of that stock. That means if unsystematic risk of stock A is taken, then you multiply weight of A squared plus unsystematic risk of stock B, which will be multiplied to weight of B squared. And likewise, you go on adding all these components till n number of stocks. The aggregate will give you unsystematic risk of the entire portfolio. And finally, once you get the entire risk of the portfolio, that is entire unsystematic risk of the portfolio, add it to the systematic risk of portfolio to obtain the overall portfolio risk. So friends, what we will do, we will take up a question first where we are learning completely 
William Sharp's approach. Then we will take up one or two questions for comparison between what is to be done in William Sharp's single index model as compared to what we had been doing earlier under Markov's model. And at later stage we go to the second category of this model that is learning how to construct an optimal portfolio which is again a good part of this William Sharp's single index model. So let us do one thing what I have just mentioned I am showing the same thing summarized on screen pay attention over here and then we start up with questions. So what we have just discussed is as per William Sharp's single index model the portfolio variance can be determined as below. So sigma p square representing portfolio variance will be aggregate of systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Now here to compute systematic risk what you would do is consider variance of market and the squared value of portfolio beta should be multiplied to variance of market. This part would give you systematic risk of the portfolio. That means for that purpose you just need information about variance of market or standard deviation of market and you also need information about beta of portfolio. Then the next term unsystematic risk which according to William Sharp can be computed independently it is sigma e squared. Now how to determine this let me explain this once again sigma e squared which indicates the overall unsystematic risk where you will consider for each stock the unsystematic risk of that particular stock into weight of that stock squared value. In other words if it is stock 1, stock 2, stock 3 and so on it will be unsystematic risk of stock 1 obviously through variance approach. So it is sigma e1 squared into w1 squared that is weight of 1 squared then unsystematic risk of second stock squared that is through variance approach into weight of stock 2 squared sigma e3 squared into weight of 3 squared plus plus so on up to n number of terms. So friends I told you to understand this thing better let us solve questions to get more clarity. So let us move ahead and deal with question number 71. Let us read this question. A has portfolio having following features. Now you have four securities. L M N K beta of each security informed to you and random error for each of these given to you. Now random error definitely does not mean anything other than unsystematic risk. So you can see one thing it is sigma e this i indicates for each row. So it is sigma e for stock L as 7 sigma e for stock M as 11 and so on. But friends notice one thing what we have been informed is sigma e values we want sigma e squared values for each of these. So no problem we can square up these values to get what we want and then weights of these uh, stocks in your portfolio also informed obviously aggregate of these weights would be 1. You are required to find out the risk of the portfolio if the standard deviation of the market index that is sigma m is 18 percent. Friends one thing worth noticing in this whole question the entire question does not talk about which model you have to apply. Let us see can we apply Markov's model answer is no we have no clue to apply Markov's model because for that we would require so much additional information that is correlation between L and M correlation between L and N correlation between L and K that means practically we would want correlation or covariance of all of these between two at a time. So there will be lots of combinations of correlation or covariance we have no information about that instead what we have been given is beta and unsystematic risk of each stock that means based on the information available it is implied that you are going to use not the Markovitz model but William Sharp's single index model to solve the question. So what we are going to do first of all to solve this question through single index model we would use this beta information and weights information to compute weighted average of these betas which will be the beta of the portfolio. 
once you get beta of portfolio and standard deviation of market is given so sigma m is given so 18% is standard deviation of market you take variance of market that is 18 square into whatever beta of portfolio you get take the squared value of that beta of portfolio and squared value of beta of portfolio into variance of market will give you systematic risk what we have just discussed some time back and then to compute the unsystematic risk take the squared value of these unsystematic risks and multiply each of these with the squared values of weights the aggregate of the product will give you unsystematic risk of the overall portfolio then systematic risk plus unsystematic risk will give you the overall portfolio risk so let us see how to present the solution so in the solution we would first calculate portfolio beta you know one thing portfolio beta is going to be weighted average of betas of four individual stocks so good thing is we have straight information about the beta of each stock and weight of each stock so there is no problem in identifying and determining the portfolio beta which is resulting to 1.295 now determining portfolio risk that is sigma p squared using william sharp model you would write as per william sharp's single index model the portfolio variance can be determined as below sigma p squared will be systematic risk plus unsystematic risk you may write up the notation for computing systematic and unsystematic risk both so after making calculation of portfolio beta you will write up this equation and ahead in the solution what we would do is substitute all these values we will also have a need to determine sigma e squared value for the entire portfolio but before we do all that do one thing first write up this much what is appearing on screen all right friends you would have finished writing this whole thing so let us move ahead in the solution so what we do further is we first mention the fact that the given random error for each stock indicate the unsystematic risk of such stock as the unsystematic risk arises because of no correlation such unsystematic risk for the entire portfolio shall be determined as below so this is something important where i would want you to pay attention we have to compute sigma e squared value for the entire portfolio which would represent the unsystematic risk for the entire portfolio through variance approach now you see what is informed in the question we have been given sigma e for each stock we also have weight for each stock what we just need to do is take the squared values of each unsystematic risk multiplied to their respective weights squared so let us put up the values look into one thing the unsystematic risk in standard deviation format was given as a 7 for security l we have to use the variance form so we have taken the squared value of 7 and then weight of l squared weight of l was 0 0.25 squared value of 0 0.25 so 7 square into 0.25 square becomes the first term second term again same way sigma e for stock m that is standard deviation based unsystematic risk for stock m was 11 we want the variance base so we have taken 11 squared into w m squared w m squared is weight of m squared weight of m was 0.3 squared likewise 
we have for stock N and stock K. So once you make all these calculations, you get the overall unsystematic risk of the portfolio. By calculation, this is coming to 17.755. Now, sigma P squared will be systematic risk plus unsystematic risk. Unsystematic risk we have just determined and systematic risk will be simply variance of market into beta of portfolio squared. So, 18 is the standard deviation of market. We want variance of market, so 18 squared. Then we want beta of portfolio squared. Beta of portfolio we have just determined some time back 1.295 squared value of that and plus the unsystematic risk already in the variance form is 17.755. Finally, when you make up this calculation, what you get is 561.11. This is the variance of the portfolio. If you would want the standard deviation of the portfolio, take square root of 561.11 and what you get is 23.688%. So friends, carefully take note of this whole thing and that will be end of the solution. All right, friends, let us move ahead and take up question number 72. Let us read this question. Consider the following data with respect to market index and two stocks X and Y. Sigma X, Sigma Y, Sigma M. That means standard division of stock X, stock Y and market given to you. Weight of X, weight of Y is also given to you. Then what we have further information as correlation between X and Y is available. Correlation between X and M is also available. Correlation between Y and M also available. You are required to determine the following beta of X and Y. First thing the question is asking you to find beta of X and Y. How would you do that? Beta of X will be sigma X divided by sigma M into correlation between X and M. Beta of Y will be sigma Y divided by sigma M into correlation between Y and M. So this part can be done easily. Then unsystematic risk of X and Y using variance approach. So individual stocks systematic and unsystematic risk how do you find? You know it very well. Only thing is you have to use variance approach. So you can do it very easily no troubles at all. So to find unsystematic risk what you will do? You will take variance of X that will be representing the total risk and then sigma m square into beta x squared will give you the systematic risk of stock x and then from total risk when you subtract systematic risk you get unsystematic risk as balancing figure. So you very well know how to do that. Finally third part of the question is asking you portfolio variance using Markowitz model and fourth part is asking you to use William Sharp's approach for computing portfolio variance. So let us look into how to present the solution. We have already discussed how would you approach. So first thing what you will do is compute beta of security X 
beta of x is sigma x by sigma m into correlation between x and m and that will be 8 by 6 into 0 0.8 that gives you 1.0667 likewise you will calculate beta of security y beta of y will be sigma y by sigma m into correlation between y and m that is 5 by 6 into 0 0.74 that gives you 0 0.6167 then you calculate unsystematic risk of x and y using variance approach so just make a columnar presentation total risk will be variance of each of these stocks x and y so 64 is the variance of x so how we got 64 if you are wondering it is simply squared value of its standard deviation standard deviation was 8 so variance will be 8 squared that is 64 likewise standard deviation of y was 5 squared value of that standard deviation that is variance of y will be square of 5 that is 25 less systematic risk now how would you compute systematic risk for stock x so stock x will be sigma m square into beta x squared so standard deviation of market was 6 so sigma m square that is variance of market will be 6 squared into beta of x squared beta of x we have just computed over here squared value of that multiplied to variance of market you get the systematic risk of stock x and likewise you calculate systematic risk for stock y also so systematic risk of stock y comes as 13.69 and from the total risk of each of these we subtract their respective systematic risk to obtain the remainder the residuary risk as the unsystematic risk this is nothing but the random error in the portfolio random error means the error which is arising because of randomness of picking the stock in your portfolio anyway this is the unsystematic risk of individual stocks x and y so friends before we proceed ahead with the portfolio calculations first please note down this whole calculation carefully Make sure that you understand and write everything. All right, friends, let us move ahead and take up the calculations asked in third and fourth part. But for that, we would want to know the beta of portfolio. So beta of portfolio will be beta of x into weight of x plus beta of y into weight of y. We substitute these values and obtain beta of portfolio. One more working that you have to make is compute the unsystematic risk of the entire portfolio. Earlier question we have already discussed how you should do that so there is no explanation required it is exactly the same thing that we have to do again so we got unsystematic risk of stock x and unsystematic risk of stock y already using variance approach that means these two values sigma ex squared and sigma ey squared we have already made the calculation in the earlier workings 
and now weight of x squared and weight of y squared will be respectively multiplied to each of these unsystematic risk and finally what you get is the unsystematic risk for the entire portfolio so if you remember 23.04 and 11.31 were the respective unsystematic risks for stock x and y they have been multiplied to their respective squared of weights finally what we get is 10.104 so friends these two workings are essential for applying william sharp's model and then uh, at the end once you are done with this we will apply both the models and compute portfolio variance so first do one thing take note of what you find on screen right now All right friends after finishing these two calculations let us move ahead and let us apply the calculations for portfolio variance first by markovitz model now this is something known to you very well i don't have to explain you how to do this sigma p squared so many times you have computed sigma p squared will be sigma x square into w x square plus sigma y square into w y square plus 2 times sigma x into sigma y into weight of x into weight of y into correlation between x and y the question has given all these input information clearly so let us just substitute the values and you know how to apply the calculation three terms correct so just make the calculation and what you get aggregate of the three terms as 38.944 this is the portfolio variance as per markovitz model now sharp's model what you have to do portfolio variance will be systematic risk plus unsystematic risk we have already calculated unsystematic risk in the earlier working and now systematic risk will be variance of market into beta of portfolio squared so variance of market will be 6 squared and beta of portfolio we already got this calculation in the earlier workings squared value of that beta multiplied to variance of market this factor this term is going to give you systematic risk of the portfolio and this unsystematic risk we have already calculated in the earlier workings so 38.4085 is the variance of portfolio as per sharps model so friends you can see one thing 38.4085 38.944 both of these like very close to each other but markovitz model has calculation accuracy that means between the two this calculation is mathematically proven calculation this is more of an approximation anyway friends because the question has demanded both the approaches and question has given you all the necessary information you simply have made calculations using both the approaches so do one thing write up this whole thing and that will be end of the solution
all right friends you would have finished writing this whole thing let us move ahead and deal with the second part of this william sharp's single index model that is all about constructing an optimal portfolio now friends uh, what we are going to learn in this concept number 37 might appear to be little complicated initially it is a big procedure okay it will take some time for you to understand the whole thing but do not worry at all once you solve one question just one question you will get the whole idea about how to make this calculation even at one of the steps where you have to compute a cutoff point that formula also might appear to be a little complicated but do not worry at all i told you it is very simple initially for solving the very first question it will take time let it take time even i will go slow for you to properly understand the whole procedure so this is a five step procedure but the good part of william sharp's single index model when it comes to constructing an optimal portfolio just in five steps you not only identify which stocks are efficient to be included in the portfolio and at the later stages in the procedure at some steps you would also find the weights of these stocks to be included and friends good thing is even though a lot of approximation is used in william sharp's model but still you get a very good result once you apply this model for constructing an optimal portfolio so let us do one thing let us first jot down all the steps that we are going to apply in this construction of optimal portfolio and then let us take up a comprehensive question to understand the whole matter so the first step in the process will be determining excess return to beta ratio for each stock and rank them on that basis from highest to lowest thereafter you would make an important calculation that is a cutoff rate or a cutoff point and for that you are going to apply this formula my friends i told you earlier that this formula might appear to be little weird and complicated initially believe me it is not once you understand the breakup of this whole thing and how to make this calculation of c it is no big deal it's just a little longer process it is not complicated at all so right now don't try to even uh, you know remember this just let us move ahead and take the other steps and one more thing there is no need to write up these steps because these are given in your textbooks already step three would be find the optimal cutoff point so you would have computed cutoff point for all the stocks then you should do one thing you select highest of all correct you take the highest of all cutoff points what you got and that you will identify as optimal cutoff point and select all securities up to such cutoff point from rank 1 onward for example if rank 3 security gives you highest cutoff point your selection will be rank 1 rank 2 rank 3 if rank 5 security gives you optimal cutoff point you will select 5 securities rank 1 2 3 4 5 like that thereafter determine the proportions of each security that is weights w to be included in the portfolio by using the following formula now this is another formula that you'll have to apply and that will give you weights of each of these securities so securities that you have selected in step 3 in step 4 you are going to determine their respective weights now what will happen aggregate of weights should be 1 but the weights that you compute may not have aggregate total to 1 so you may want to smoothen out the weights that is make adjustments to the weights what you should do convert the proportions into appropriate weights such that aggregate of weights should be equal to 1.00 or 100 percent so last step is just an adjustment so friends uh, this procedure is given to you in your textbooks let us now learn how to apply this step by step procedure for constructing an optimal portfolio let us take up question number 75 let us read this question first following is the available data about returns of seven securities 
So stocks are named as A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Their mean returns have been informed. That is average returns of each stock is given. Beta of each stock is given. And unsystematic risk for each stock is given. Important thing is this is sigma E i squared. That means this unsystematic risk is already in the variance form. Further given risk free rate. RF is 5% and market variance sigma m squared is given as 10. Use William Sharp single index model to determine which of the above given 7 securities should be selected for an optimal portfolio and also determine the respective weights of each of the securities included in the optimum portfolio. So friends typically we just have to apply those 5 steps over here. So let us see how to present the solution. So the first step determining excess return to beta ratio for each stock and rank them on that basis from highest to lowest. So we draw a table and we take up calculations of mean returns then RF then RI minus RF and beta. So stocks named as A, B, C, D, E, F, G their mean returns whatever given in the question we have simply copied correct these information directly available in the question risk free rate now whether it is stock a b c d whatever stock risk free rate will be same for each right so now understand one thing r minus rf basically we have written r i minus rf i indicates the respective row correct so it is basically meaning for stock A it will be RA minus RF, for stock B it will be RB minus RF and so on. So it is 11 minus 5, 25 minus 5, 9 minus 5, 19 minus 5. That means you are computing the premium values for each of these stocks by taking respective R minus RF. These are the excess returns that you are getting over the risk free rate. So excess returns you have already got beta of each stock already given in the question right beta of each stock already given in the question. What you want to determine is this ratio correct excess return to beta ratio ri minus rf indicates excess return beta i indicates beta of each of these respective stocks and finally to compute this ratio we have to divide ri minus rf by beta i so that is what we have represented over here so how to make this calculation it will be 6 divided by 0 0.5 result is 12 20 divided by 2 result is 10 4 divided by 0 0.5 you get 8 14 divided by 1 14 18 divided by 1.5 is 12 9 divided by 1.5 is 6 8 divided by 1 is 8. Now we have to rank each of these correct ranking and because it is excess return to beta which is a kind of reward to risk ratio you would obviously rank the one which is having the highest of this ratio and that first rank obviously goes to the highest one which is giving 14 as this ratio so rank 1 goes to stock D. I am sure you have no problem in understanding what we have just done. We have identified 14 as the highest of excess return to beta and rank 1 is given to stock D. Thereafter what you do is identify the next highest but in the next highest what we can see 12 over here 12 over here there is a tie when there is a tie between the two simply look into which one gives you more returns go with that as second rank. Ideally, you rank any of these as a second rank, it will not make much of a difference. But please do not put rank number 2 for both of these, right? One has to be ranked 2 and one has to be ranked 3. So, I am asking you to prefer the one which has higher returns. So, which comes to rank number 2 assigned to stock E. And obviously rank number 3 assigned to stock A. Next highest is 10. So stock B is given rank 4. Next highest again we have a tie between C and G. That means ratio wise we have indifference between these two. 
we would now look into which one is giving you higher returns the higher returns are given by G so we have given rank 5 to stock G then obviously rank number 6 to stock C and last rank will be given to stock F so friends what you find on screen is just the first step I want you to carefully note it down and then we move ahead Friends, I am sure you would have written all this by now and notice one thing. This is the first step. Now, just ask yourself if you are given a separate new question, will you be easily able to do this much what you find in solution by far? The obvious answer that would come up is yes. You are simply doing one thing. You are finding excess return to beta for each stock and ranking the stocks on that basis from highest to lowest so this much I'm sure all of you can do it easily likewise the next step which I told you will take a little longer time but it is not complicated if you crack it down break it down into small small part calculation so let us move ahead and deal with the second step which is little longer so step two determining cutoff rate now carefully observe this entire tabular presentation so what we do is in step one we have ranked each stocks now we are going to sequence the stocks on the basis of the ranks given so ranked stocks so first rank given to d second rank to e third a fourth b fifth g sixth c and seventh rank given to f then R i minus R f divided by beta i and then we will write up beta squared values then the unsystematic risk of each stock we have written all this because if you now look into the formula we want this term that means this was our objective correct you look into the formula take time look into the formula we would want summation of r i minus r f into beta i divided by sigma e squared we want the summation value of this correct and because we want all this it gets initiated from this ratio itself so r i minus r f by beta i now this is nothing but the same excess return to beta that you have already computed so you just have to fill up the column with that ratio that you have computed in step one in the next column you have to take beta squared and in the third column you have to take sigma e squared now sigma e squared directly given to you in the question beta is given but beta square is what we are aiming over here why we are trying to put beta squared value I'll just tell you the reason if you look into this calculation this is our end calculation that we are wanting by far okay so it is r i minus r f into beta 
whereas we have started this calculation with ri minus rf divided by beta i would want to nullify this beta and then multiply beta that means if i multiply this ratio with beta squared this beta gets cancelled and the next beta the second beta which is product over here gets multiplied to ri minus rf so basically this ratio multiplied by beta square will give you this numerator ri minus rf into beta i and then we want sigma e squared as denominator so what we simply do is we take this calculation into beta square divided by sigma e square we will get this and because we want summation value of this we would split the column into two parts the base calculation and the cumulative calculation now look into the denominator given in the formula look again at step 2 okay in your textbooks look at step 2 in the denominator we want summation value of beta i squared upon sigma e squared so we already have beta squared we already have sigma e squared so this divide by this will give you this ratio and we want summation of this so we again split this column into the base calculation and the cumulative value and once you get all this it is very very easy to determine cut off point for which we will make a separate working note so friends if you are wondering and waiting that when is the calculation going to come in front of you then you are wasting your time my friends i don't want you to copy all these calculations if you once again want my guidance on how to present calculations i can definitely help you out but this time you are not going to copy figures from the screen so let me just guide you quickly once again r minus rf by beta you have already computed in step 1 for each of these stocks be careful don't copy the stocks ratios directly because in the earlier table the sequence was a b c d e f g now the sequence has got changed the moment i ask students to fill up this column this is one common mistake i find they do then what you have to do beta values are given in the question but again the question table is in the sequence of a b c d e f g i want you to go with this sequence so look into what is beta of stock d carefully and take the squared value of that then take beta of stock e and take squared value of that and so on so this column will be filled up with the squared value of betas then this column will be sigma e squared you have to simply copy the values at least if you can fill up these three columns correctly you will be having no trouble in making this calculation because if you have to make this calculation what you simply have to do is r minus rf by beta this column into beta squared divided by sigma e squared and you get this once you get these summation indicates a cumulative value for each line and then this calculation also definitely don't bother to write up this c working note don't fill up this column but try to fill up the rest of the table from now i am giving you 2 minutes time to do this calculation
all right friends uh, i have given you time to try out these calculations to make the calculations on your own let me check whether you could do it correct or not so now i am showing the table once again but now with all the columns filled up other than the last one which is cut off point so this is what you should have obtained if you take care of the sequence over here there will be no mistakes correct so make sure that you have written this all values in order of the ranks correct not alphabetically a b c d e f g and same thing be careful with beta squared values and while copying even the unsystematic risk you should make sure that you would have obtained this and then if you want to have this calculation i told you it will be column 1 into column 2 divide by column 3 so this into this divide by this so it will be simply 14 into 1 divide by 20 what you get is 0.7 then 12 into 2.25 divided by 30 what you get is 0.9 12 into 0.25 divided by 10 what you get is 0.3 10 into 4 divided by 40 you get 1 8 into 1 divided by 20 0.4 8 into 0.25 divided by 50 0.04 Six into two point two five divided by thirty, you get zero point four five. Now simply take cumulative values, so it will be point seven over here. This line it will be point seven plus point nine, that will be one point six. Then one point six plus zero point three will be one point nine. One point nine plus one will be two point nine, and so on. I'll be happy to know if you. have made all these calculations correct and then for this column you have to simply take beta square divide by sigma e square so this column value divide by this column value and you have to split again this column into two i told you you have to first arrive at the base calculation and then the cumulative values the calculations should be exactly matching with what i am showing and the cumulative values also given over here and finally we are yet to make this column calculation so friends i am giving you again a minute of time ensure that you have written everything correctly and you have made all calculations correctly All right friends have you verified all your calculations let us move ahead now in this table where one column is still incomplete this column we have yet to fill up now i am going to use this base values to arrive at cut off point calculation so let us move ahead we begin the calculation with working notes and we first write up the cut off point formula now if you observe this formula what we have in the table already r minus rf into beta divided by sigma e squared we have already made this calculation and we have also found the cumulative values for each of the stocks once we check this calculation once we get this value we simply multiply sigma m square that is variance of market to this similarly in the denominator we have already made cumulative value of beta i squared by sigma e squared to that again you multiply variance of market and in the denominator additionally add 1 so let us begin with the first rank stock that is stock d look into what you got this value for stock d if you look into the table this value the cumulative part huh? don't forget that it is cumulative part that we should focus on not the base value calculation 
तो क्यूमुलेटिव पार्ट ऑफ दिस कैलकुलेशन वॉज जीरो पॉइंट सेवन वेरायंस ऑफ मार्केट इज टेन सो वी मल्टीप्लाई जीरो पॉइंट सेवन टू टेन इन द डिनोमिनेटर वॉट यू वुड डू इज दिस पार्ट वॉज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव दैट ऑल्सो गेट्स मल्टीप्लाइड टू टेन एंड दिस होल थिंग एडेड टू वन सो वॉट वी गेट इज कट ऑफ पॉइंट फॉर स्टॉक डी टेन इंटू पॉइंट सेवन डिवाइडेड बाय वन प्लस टेन इंटू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव सो वॉट वी गेट इज सेवन अपॉन वन पॉइंट फाइव एंड दैट इज फोर पॉइंट सिक्स 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 सेवन सो फ्रेंड्स वॉट आई वॉन्ट यू टू डू इज केयरफुली नोट डाउन दिस एंटायर कैलकुलेशन एंड देन वी गो बैक टू द टेबल एंड पुट अप दिस वैल्यू इन दैट कॉलम All right, friends. You would have written this calculation already. Let us go back to the table and fill up this value for stock D. Now, exactly in the same way, you will have to make calculations for all other stocks. So, let us do that calculation. So, we go ahead and make calculation for stock E in the same way. Once you understand how you have to make this calculation, it is no big deal. It is easier. so ce stands for cut off point for stock e ca stands for cut off point for stock a calculation is 7.60 for stock b cb that is cut off point for stock b the calculation goes to 8.2857 so friends again note down all these calculations in your workings and then we will go back to the table and fill up that last column All right friends after making these calculations in your workings let us go back to the table and fill up the column for the three values we have just computed and then we would move on to make cut off point calculations for the other three stocks that is G C and F in the same way so write up these values you would have written it already and finally let us move ahead and make the other remaining calculations for stock g for stock c then for stock f at the end so this will be the last part of your working finish writing this and then we go back to the table and fill it up
all right friends you would have finished with these workings also let us go back to the table and fill up that last column remaining values now your table is complete so by far you have performed only two out of the five steps but by now you have performed almost 80 85 percent of the solution because now the task is very easy third step onward it is no big deal once you have calculated all cutoff point values just look into for step three just look into which is the highest among all so highest of all is 8.2857 so we are declaring this as the highest cutoff point and all stocks up to this rank will be included in your portfolio because this cutoff point is for stock B which is rank 4 so we are going to include rank 1 rank 2 rank 3 rank 4 that means D E A B are going to be included as stocks in your portfolio so let us write up that last what we have discussed find the optimal cutoff point that is step 3 the highest of all and select all securities up to such cutoff point from rank 1 onward optimal cutoff point is C equals to 8.2857 and securities D E A and B shall be selected in the portfolio so write up this also and then we move ahead All right, friends, let us move ahead with fourth step. In the fourth step, what we have to simply do is apply this formula for weights, excess return to beta minus optimal cutoff rate into beta i upon sigma e squared. So let us see what is this. 14 is the excess return to beta ratio for stock D, the first rank. From that, you subtract the optimal cutoff point. Again, take utmost care while you are dealing with this calculation. Many students, what they do is they subtract the respective cutoff point of the stock. Don't ever do that. It is not the respective cutoff point that you have to subtract from excess return to beta. It is the optimal cutoff point or optimal cutoff rate that you have to subtract. So, 14 minus 8.2857 into beta divided by sigma e squared. And what you get is 0 0.2857. This will be the weight of D. And likewise, you are going to calculate the weight of the other three also. But do one thing. First, note down this much. Alright friends, you would have written this, let us move ahead and make weight calculation for the other stocks as well. So WE, WA and finally WB. Notice one thing, from each of these excess return to beta ratios for each stock, we are subtracting not their respective cutoff point but optimal cutoff point that means what you are subtracting is common in all one more thing i would want you to notice do you remember we and wa what represents over here as weight of e and a while computing excess return to beta ratio that was 12 for each correct 
because this was 12 for each i told you you may rank any of these in any sequence it will not make any difference look into their respective weights they are both coming as the same that means you are including both the stocks in your portfolio that too with equal weights so write up these calculations and then we move ahead and once you finish writing this also mention the fact that aggregate of weights is not totaling to 1 the aggregate of weights is coming as 0.7428 and that is why the last step of adjusting the weights will be required so finish writing this whole thing quickly all right friends that was end of step 4 what you have to now do is you have to just make adjustments to these four weights that you have computed so that the aggregate should be 1 and not anything other than 1 so the simple logic is the weight of first stock should be 0.2857 against the total weight of 0.7428 so what should be the weight of this stock if the total has to be 1 in other words for weight aggregate of 0.7428 these are the individual weights so if this has to be 1 then what should be these individual weights so let us make that calculation of adjusted weights and what we simply do is what weight we got in the earlier step divided by that aggregate weight that is 0.7428 and what you get is the adjusted weight for stock d and likewise you make calculation for stock e then stock a and lastly the last one that is stock b so quickly take note of this and that will be end of the solution All right friends you would have finished writing this whole thing if you have learned this william sharp single index model for the first time then friends obviously you know one thing what you have to do you must practice this very well i have given some more questions of the similar type for you to practice revise it very well once you have solved one or two questions this whole concept will be tuned up and you will have absolutely no problem in retaining it and in between also within few days find time revise it again revisions are very important so friends uh, this as i told you this was a last session on portfolio theory 
we are putting an end to this session. Let us declare this as the end of part 6 and with the end of part 6, we also put an end to the portfolio chapter. So, thank you so much for attending this class.